So, weak clones or genetic drift is why your garden failed yet again. Hmm. I feel you. But honestly, bro, we need to talk. So stay tuned for a new edition of No Fail Hydroponics. Okay, so like in the beginning, um, it's stories I hear all the time, whether in the hydro store or from people I consult, people who've needed to call me for some kind of advice. Time and time again, I hear, oh, ape, um, yeah, man, the garden failed, you know, bro gave me some weak clones, or, oh, yeah, I got these clones, and they were a clone of a clone of a clone of a clone, and, you know, that's why everything failed. I hear, I've heard it probably hundreds of times over the last 10 years. But I'm going to tell you straight up, it's not the clones, guys and gals, okay? It's straight up, it's user error, error, it's you, okay? It's a problem with you and or your setup. Um, and we're going to get to the bottom of it today. So um, just going to keep it real with you, keep it 100, because ultimately our goal is to make sure you're successful, right? And if we keep blaming other things in ourselves and we keep failing, we keep wasting money, then we're getting nowhere. So let, let's get right down to it. So up on the board here. I've got some of the real problems we're going to talk about why you have problems with your clones or why we use the excuse, oh, my clones are weak or genetic drift. Um, so let's talk about it. The first thing I want to talk about is usually when we have problems with clones, we're straight up, we're bringing clones in that have some kind of pest and or disease on them. Okay. So we're going to put pests and disease. And too often, we're bringing in clones into our garden from some vendor, um, maybe some dispensary, um, some guy we know, somebody on Craigslist that, uh, you know, to the naked eye, they look okay. And then we have problems two to four weeks later with them, with mold, uh, powdery mildew, or um, spider mites, some kind of um, some kind of insect pest. So ultimately, um, that's the first problem. Second problem that we're going to get is usually these clones, they're freshly rooted clones. Okay? And what I mean by freshly rooted is they have no real root system. Okay? They have no established root system. So here we are, guys, time and time again, they'll go by... 50, 60 clones, and then they'll turn right around, go home, and throw them right underneath a thousand watt light. Okay, never mind that for the previous uh, two to four weeks they've been under fluorescence, and we're gonna take them right home. We're gonna put them in our rock wool, gonna put them in our media, and we're gonna shock the shit out of them and put them put them right underneath a thousand watt light, and we're gonna watch these plants struggle. Okay, and then again we're gonna blame it on the plants. So that's item number two. Item number three is uh, well, I kind of hit two and three together. It's going to be freshly rooted plants and then we're going to put them into, into a hot environment. Okay, so let's go right to some of the solutions. How can we fix this stuff? How can we, how can we stop blaming clones for our failure? Okay, so let's start about some, talk about some solutions. Okay, so obviously the first thing I'm going to say is, you know, let's get disease-free pests. I'm um, disease free clones. Pest and disease free clones. How about that? <laughs> Let's get it right finally. Okay? But we're never going to have success if we're bringing bugs continuously into our garden. Okay? Uh, fighting with uh, sp spider mites or powdery mildew deep into flower is not fun. Okay, and anybody who's done it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's ensure that when we're bringing clones into our flower room, that they're disease and pest free. Okay, and that's gonna, you're gonna have to quarantine them, and you're gonna have to treat them for pests. Okay, eradicate all pests uh, on your on your uh, fresh clones, especially when you spend good money on them. Okay, even if you make your own, which I recommend, uh, you you don't want to be perpetuating this thing of bringing insects and pests into the grow room. Okay, um, let's talk about the next one. I would recommend a solution: healthy clones. Well, that sounds kind of crazy. Well, duh. 
Okay, what do you mean by healthy clones, Abe? Well, this is what I mean. Only bring the healthy clones into your garden. It costs you money to bring in some, ultimately it costs you money to bring in a scraggly, raggedy ass clone with one root on it. Okay, um, that spot could be utilized for something that's going to give you something in return. Okay, so if you need to make so many extra cuttings or buy so many extra cuttings to ensure that you have a full crop, then do so. Okay, if you're just trying to save 10 bucks or 15 bucks, you know, 20 to 40 bucks, and it's ended up costing you a thousand dollars, it's ridiculous. So get as many clones as you healthy clones as you need for your garden and stop putting in clones that are raggedy and aren't ready to go. Okay, the next one we're gonna talk about. Is we're going to talk about um, pre-vegged clones with established roots. Okay, so we're going to take these cuttings that we get these nice healthy cuttings, and we're going to pre-veg them for ten to fourteen days. Okay, we're going to put them in red beer cups or some kind of small pot. And we're going to veg them until we get a healthy root ball. Okay, and I call that pre-vegging. And this is going to ensure that when we finally take them out of the vegetative process and put them into flowering, that they're going to jump off immediately and give us the best start because they have a fresh, healthy root ball. Okay, not just one or two straggling uh, roots coming out of their rooting cube that they're originally rooted in. You want a nice, full root ball to grow into your into the flowering cycle and then you want to you want to give that some time before you initially hit flower hit the 12 hour cycle but we want uh, pre-vegged clones okay and lastly the last thing we're going to talk about is I'm going to let the word speak for itself no excuses guys time and time again okay we blame something else Okay? We want to blame the clones. We want to blame the nutrients. We want to blame the water. Fellas, it really comes down to us. Okay, So ultimately, no more excuses. Okay, It's on you. Everything, you're mother nature in your room. So everything's user error. If you got some bad whatever, okay, you brought in bugs in your room, that's your fault. Okay, So no more excuses. And we all know how to take care of these things. And if you don't, you come here and you learn some things or just shoot me an email. Okay, so that's pretty much it for today. But let's break it down, fellas and ladies. If you're looking for solutions to your indoor gardening and hydroponic needs, come here to No Fail Hydroponics and April will straighten it out for you. Okay, we can make a video for you or just shoot me a message. Okay, thehydroponicape at gmail.com. And you'll see all my contact information um, on, the next, on the next frame. So be sure to subscribe. And make sure you don't miss any of these important uh, inf uh, videos with lots of tips and uh, some helpful reminders. And, uh, you know, I'm here to help you out. So until next time, be safe out there and happy growing.